Hello, it is Topical Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Steve Cypress here on an untypically gloomy winter day here in usually sunny southern Arizona. You can see the clouds uh, covering up the tops of the mountains uh, in front of our home here. Uh, it's been cloudy and rainy all day long. Hardly can complain, of course. If we were up north, this would be like a foot and a half of snow. Uh, besides, it's forecast tomorrow or the next day to get back up to 70 and sunny, so we'll be just fine. Anyway, big news today with the start of the impeachment trial, hearings, whatever the heck nonsense going on against Donald Trump in the uh, Congress, and the Senate, whatever. Meanwhile, he's off uh, in Davos uh, with all of the jet-setting billionaires in their private jets who are proclaiming that while they, of course, can do anything they want, we all have to give all our money to the government because of the weather and the climate and all that kind of nonsense. So I don't think they're going to have anyone there who's actually a scientist or a farmer or anyone who makes their living actually based on the climate. It's all these elitists who just want all the control and all the money because if they had any farmers or any actual scientists that make their living uh, working with the climate, they would tell you that things are just fine and there's certainly no alarmist apocalyptic nonsense going on that they have to rob all of our money. But anyway, Trump comes in there and typical bull in a china shop makes his bold, outrageous speech about how great the U.S. is and you're not speaking to all the other countries and uh, how it worked and how great he is about what he did and uh, how everyone else should do that and blah, 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 blah. But the point is, as I watched this speech this morning, I was like, man, you know, it is obvious. I mean, of course it's obvious that Donald Trump could never write such a speech and could never speak that way without a speech writer. And it made me think of today's lesson on Topical Tuesday is how about you in your business? You know, that's why copywriters exist. And I don't mean copyright like, uh, you know, at the end of a book or a movie, this is copyright 2015 or whatever. I mean, people that write words, write what's known as copy. Um, before I became really good at writing my own copy, I paid a whole bunch of copywriters to write a whole bunch of websites and emails and uh, promotional materials and campaigns and all kinds of stuff. And I studied it a lot and I paid a ton of money and uh, went to a whole bunch of seminars uh, on copywriting and practiced it over and over and over. But until you're really that confident that you can persuade with words, that's why copywriters exist. So do like you see Trump doing. Obviously there's somebody writing that speech for him who's really good because, you know, all I think of every time I see Trump giving any one of these speeches is it'll be wildly entertaining and fun when he goes off the teleprompter and starts riffing on his own, but it's clearly not as effective as if he just reads the words and gives the speech. And that's pretty much what he did this morning. He didn't, <laughs> didn't do a lot of proving that he didn't write it when he says things like, uh, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. And that's true. You know, he's, he says that when he gives his campaign speeches. This was pretty much a, a, a campaign-like speech for Trump. It's an electric year, election year. I guess he can be excused for that. But anyway, uh, the bottom line point is Trump is not doing his own writing. Uh, if he has to write anything out like a presidential proclamation or executive order or whatever they're called, he doesn't write his own speeches. Uh, and I see too many business owners writing their own emails and putting up the copy on their own websites or their own Facebook posts or their own social media posts or whatever. And uh, it's just making a lot of mistakes. And, you know, that equates to lost money. So why just start the business in the first place if you're not going to do everything you can to make as much money as you can? Then you can expand, you can help more people, you can hire more people, you can serve more people, you can do all kinds of great things. So why would you waste one day, one email, one post, one website, one anything with anything less than fantastic copy? And for that, 
You really ought to, until you're really good at it, you really ought to hire professional copywriters. And if you want help finding one, I know a whole bunch of them. Uh, you gotta be careful. You gotta have a lot of knowledge about copywriting and what questions to ask and how to tell who's good and who's bad if you haven't hired them before and even if you have. So if you want help with that, uh, go to helpfromsteve.com, I'll help you out. I might even be able to refer you. I, eh, I can attempt to refer you to copywriters, but the best ones are booked up for months. So it's not really a lot of use to do that. Uh, however, I know a lot of copywriters and I'm very quick to be able to tell if copywriters know what they're doing. I can also give some questions, the key questions you gotta ask before you hire a copywriter. But by all means, make sure if you're not absolutely confident that you are a fantastic copywriter, that you get somebody that is. That'll do it for Topical Tuesday. January 21st, 2020. I'll be back tomorrow on World Wide Web Wednesday with a specific tip to help you make money via the internet. From cloudy, rainy Southern Arizona, Steve Cypress saying thanks for watching today, and I'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.